Hello, Michael. Hi. Can I just ask you about, the, you <coughs> stressed the, the importance of the mentality of the group so much this season. Have, have you seen that sort of, that, that strength of, of belief this week after a couple of setbacks, just, just in training around the place, de the determination to put it right, to, to, to get back on track? Yeah, I, I see a sense of um, revenge and that determination to to get it even better and, and that is not enough, you know, and you have to tweak it and, and we have to demand each other more and more and, uh, and we have to be perfectionist, uh, but at the same time we have to play, play with that flow. We are really good when we play with that energy and flow and, um, and don't be thinking about the results. That's the last thing I think we have to do. And that anger and hunger, hunger sort of thing sort of brings it out. You expect to see that tomorrow night from what you've seen in training? Yeah, if anything, this week I have to stop them because they wanted more and more and uh, let's leave it for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day that, uh, that we have to show it. Mikel, Arsene Wenger was speaking this week about how when he was in charge here, he had it in his contract that the owners weren't ever allowed into the dressing room or to interfere at all. I wonder what your view is on that of people coming into the dressing room and mm. involvement from the ownership. I don't have that in my contract. <laughs> 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 they they have been uh, probably have seen had the, the reasons to do that. Uh, it's nothing that uh, is in my contract about that. But in general, your view on the dressing room being a safe place or people coming with in? the ownership that we have, with with the board directors that we have, they they've been welcome after the games to be around it, and and they've been exceptional all the time. And if anything, they've been helpful and and supportive, especially in in difficult moments. Well, can I see, I mean. In the last two games, you feel maybe the players have subconsciously switched off a bit because they're thinking about the future. I mean, they've, they've got the game almost under control, 2 0 up, and they've almost switched off a bit, saving for future games. For future games, I don't know whether they were subconsciously playing around the result at centre -time stages. Yes, but then it becomes really individual. You talk to them and and you get very <coughs> different answers. Unfortunately, what happens in that brain is very difficult to <coughs> absorb and get the the right answer. Um, but we know we know what we lacked in in that game and and the reason for it. Some of the reasons because we had as well um, in. The, the chance to win the game in, in two or three situations, clearly, and we didn't. So at the end, something lacked, and uh, that's why we draw the game. Are you sort of a bit worried about the defending in the colours? Because the goals you've given away mm. have been quite soft goals recently. Well, especially the last two goals that we gave away, yeah, very unhappy with that, and it's something that we have to do much better to win games. Is, it, is that anything to do with the, the absentees, or is that just players, individuals switching off? I think we have to. Regardless who plays, we have to defend those situations much better. Dan? Um, I just wonder, just picking up what John was saying, you said about the atmosphere of revenge, and then you've had to stop your players. Can, can you just give us some idea of what it is they're doing that's making you think that? Just an example. Well, the way they talk, the way they communicate it um, in the meetings that we had and the discussions that we have to understand um, how we move forward after that um, was all the right answers, you know. Um, they were very clear on, on what we want, how we want to do it, and uh, what is taking us all the way here. And uh, that's what we have to continue to. I'm sure you've seen a video that's done the rounds this week of players signing a shirt for the mascot that mm. has drawn a lot of criticism. I just wondered what, I know the club, they say, is part of a long day with the mascot, but I just wondered what, what you make of the criticism that the players have received and, and are you bothered by the perception that your players... Yeah, the true thing, first of all, it comes from from Arsenal TV, you know, and uh, and when you speak about connection and what we have built with our supporters <coughs> is for what we do every single day. You spoke to the parents and, and the day that they had, and they had the most amazing day. So you just seen a fragment of a picture, what happened before that, afterwards, nobody saw that. And it's, I think it's just, uh, it's not fair. Do you mind how your players are perceived in public? I don't think they are perceived like that, at all. Nick? Hey, Michael. Um, just following up on Art's question about Emil or Smith Rowe, um, some players, when they're not playing, get some minutes, they want, um, need more of a sort of arm around the shoulder um, than, than, than others, don't they? What kind of character does he, does he need that sort of explanation if he's not getting the minutes? But I think what he needs, like any player, he needs clarity. Um, he needs to feel loved, you need to feel that uh, 
understand why he is and, and where he wants to be and what he needs to do together and he's in the right path the thing is that there is a lot of competition now in the team and uh, and he needs as well the right moment and the right timing in the game to get the opportunity and then he needs to take it so you feel frustrated currently he's in a good place has he been to see you uh, sorry about i've been to see him sorry i've been to see him you've been to see him yeah and, and explain why he's not happy. So. Talk about life, and uh, talk about <laughs> uh, and part of his life is is what he does here every single day. But but he knows he's in a really good place. Gary, last one. Michael, you said just now that you you, you recognised some things on Sunday that had gone wrong. Can you just tell us perhaps what they are? I told you already what you have to know. <laughs> that I already told you what you have to know. <laughs> I'm busy. <thinking. laughs> as well, um, was he? When you were at City, you were always the hunt. You were often the hunter. You know, people looked at you and worried about you. Now, now you're in a slightly different, different position. You're you're the one that's been hunted. How does it feel different to be on the sort of the other side of the boot? I don't know. We are not looking uh, behind our shoulders. Again, is what we do is look forward, look in our lane, and what can we do. And at the end of the day, after seven games, you're gonna have to have certain amount of points to be champions. And what you're gonna have is with what you do every single day, not what the rest of the do. So. How, how many points do you need from those seven games? I don't. Know. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> so earlier this season, you took about 90 points, didn't you, for the title? Sorry. 90 points. You said earlier this season. I didn't say 90. No. <laughs> you can bring the quote next week and then I give you the, the reason. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you.